Remember Africa Bank Investments Limited, or ABLE as it was known, and then there were some market commentators who made one of the best short calls in JSE history. A short is when you sell a security without owning it, hoping that you can buy it later when the price falls and you can repay your loan. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. And the John Myberg report into African Bank, absolutely scathing, not only of executives, but also of ineffective boards and ultimately shareholders who may have made some very bad decisions in pushing the and continue to support the management team at African Bank. My guest is the independent investor and analyst Jean-Pierre Fester, and we're going to be looking at the story of African Bank this evening in the context of how you identify a short. So first bit, African Bank and a reflection on that. And next, what is the next big short in the South African market? Is he a one-hit wonder or can he get it right again, I wonder? Jean-Pierre Fester, <laughs> um, you started shorting African Bank when? Wow, um, probably a year before the um, real issues came came to the fore. And, and, and a year before the real issues came to the fore, there was a five and a half billion rand rights issue, which Judge John Myberg, in his very detailed report mm -hmm. into Africa Bank, identifies as the thing that kept it from going bust at that point. Is that what you saw? Is that what caused you to say, hold on a second, there's something desperately un uncomfortable with African Bank? Yes, there, there were certain signs that the bank was quite fragile. And there were definitely a few cases where something was said publicly by the CEO. And then when the results came out, a slightly different story was, was shown to the market. Um, and I'm also still reading the report. It's like a good novel that I can't put down, mm -hmm. actually. But it is more than 500 pages, too. I read the executive summary. Yeah. I, find <laughs> I, I, find, I find I can flick through that more easily. Yes, but, but the, the interesting thing is in the details. And there they speak to things like, for instance, what was going on behind the scenes at board level and actually boards level. There's the Investments Limited Board and the Bank mm. Board. And then what they told investors publicly, and those are two different stories. They are, and the dominance of Kirkinis on the board um, was a big factor. Um, nice guy, charming guy, uh, a, 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 a crusader mm -hmm. for, for the concept of micro-lending as a way of empowering ordinary South Africans. But he dominated the executive team, he dominated the board, maybe with niceness, he wasn't nasty like Jeff Levenstein was at, at Regal Treasury Bank, um, but he was dominant, and his way was the only way. Correct. And it speaks to a normal functioning, healthy functioning of a board as it should be, which is not what happened at African Bank. Um, I must remind you also, I'm on the board of Capitec, yeah. so I'm sensitive to talk about these issues. No, absolutely. Uh, we, we're reflecting on a public document. We're reflecting yes. on what informed a decision that you made a year before asset managers who continued to support management and continued to follow rights and continued to allow the bank to raise capital you saw through something and I'm trying to know what that something was. Okay, so it's a puzzle. It's the mosaic theory. There's no one big thing, but some of the th smaller things were, for instance, the accounting policy, where a loan was only seen as impaired at CD4 after three months plus that it was behind in the repayments. That was a red flag because it was out of line with the rest of the banking industry. It was the case of saying one thing and then when results come out, you see something else when it comes to the growth mm. in the lending book. It was the induplum situation where they kept on uh, incurring and, and charging interest even after the total in interest summary, was more my than the capital. In says it's reckless. I mean, they behave recklessly. Yeah, the specific reckless issue was when they started uh, extending money from the bank to Ellerines with no security. They lent money to Ellerines, 1.3 billion rand or, or thereabouts, and it was a completely flawed decision. It was almost like a, an interdepartment, uh, uh, interdepartmental cash shift, but actually they were going into a completely different company. Yes, correct. And that's the difference between the symbiotic relationship that Mr. Kakina spoke about versus the legal difference that if you are a board member on a board of a company, you have a fiduciary duty to that company, and Ellerines was a different company to African mm. Bank, and those investors and those directors specifically should have thought a bit more about what does it mean if we not just transfer money within the same group, but transfer it from one company, a bank, to a different company, Ellerines. Now, you would have made a lot of money for your former employee employers in terms of calling the short and getting it absolutely right. You have the timing right, and, uh, and your former employers would have made a lot of money out of that decision. How then do we say this mosaic theory in a market which is uh, difficult to read at best, identify the next big South Africa short? Sure. So uh, shorting happens quite often in the market, whether with retail investors, CFDs or futures or then bigger funds but that but actually it's short. it's a short-term thing. It's a bit of a bet and it, it, you, you can cover yourself at a long position. You can use shorts that way. But if you're going and you're, going and you're wearing only shorts, as you did with African Bank, it was a big call. It was a significant call. This thing is going bust was your call. 
Is there another short like that in the market? Uh, for that to happen, you need debt. Debt makes a company fragile. And you need debt to take a company from being healthy and aggressive to going to zero. It doesn't often happen that a company goes bust. Debt is a, necessarily, a necessary requirement, but not the only one. Mm -hmm. And there are very few companies at the moment that I can see that have got the debt issue. There are companies that have got operational issues that might still be good shorts in terms of the valuation being way too high. They might not go to zero, but they could still fall quite a bit from their current valuation levels. Okay, so we, we're not now calling the death of a company, which is good, because that would make me a bit you know, <laughs> nervous and a bit uncomfortable. Um, but here we've got a situation where there are sectors on the JSE which are vulnerable to lawsuits, which are vulnerable to uh, the, the resources cycle, perhaps. My guess, though, is if you're going to put a short anywhere, it might be a bit late in the construction sector. But uh, might you go there? Correct. So those are the type of shorts where a company might not go to zero. It might get close, as we've seen with some of the construction companies that have got debt and got very close to, uh, to the zero level. But yes, you want to in short a company when it looks like it's still going well. But that's where the mosaic theory comes in, where you see these little signs, you use your intuition. Uh, there's a number here in the, in the notes of the financial statements or the CEO sweats a bit at the results presentation. You tell yourself, wait a minute, I'm getting a different picture here. You saw some of that in the in the uh, construction industry. I remember I attended a a, a, a a great function, a glorious function for for Brian Bruce yes. um, when Marion Roberts was around 100 rand per share. And it's those types of things when you have hubris, which was also attributed to Leon Kakinis, and you see companies throwing lavish parties for their great CEOs. Uh, quite soon after that, lo and behold, time and again. It happens that those types of companies stumble. So those are the little things one can pick up. Okay, so you're not, you're not, your short doesn't then focus in the construction sector, which I thought it might. Where is it? So I like companies where there's maybe morally also something that's Ooh. amiss. So you have debt, you have morally something that's amiss. And I have been public in the past that I currently am very uncomfortable with the, the business model of Net One UEPS, for instance. Okay. And we had the Minister of Social Security just coming out a week ago and saying they want to stop all these deductions of airtime, water, and some loans as well from providers from social grant recipients. And, and that is something I think is morally I've got a problem with. No, Net One UEPS with uh, Serge Bellamont, who is the chief executive, the guy who fully admits that his doctorate isn't really a doctorate, but he insists on being called Dr. Bellamont, which is fine. Um, the, there have been American investigations into uh, Internet One UEPS. The big questions as to how they got the Social Security grant in the first place. Big court cases, big fights in, in this particular company. He's always maintained that he's squeaky clean, he's done absolutely nothing wrong. You clearly have a, a fundamentally different view, as you might have had with Mr. McKinnis previously. I have a different view, but like I said, this company doesn't have a lot of debt. I, I, to tell you the truth, they actually have excess capital. Yeah. They've got excess cash because the IFC has bought in a material shielding in Net One. So I don't think the company is going to zero, but I've got a problem with the business model and those little things that I mentioned, like a doctorate that isn't truly a doctorate, those are the little red but, but isn't this then a high risk short? Because you may have a problem with it. And this is the difference then between being analytical and then having a personal view. And you, your instincts may be right on it, but while the market has got a different view, it can cost you a lot of money to be shorting a stock that is popular. For sure, and especially if it's a company listed in the US and it's got some dollar denominated revenues, uh, you've got a problem when the rand depreciates. Mm. What I would say is that uh, when shorting, you should never bet the farm. And even in the African bank case, we never bet the farm. In the net one case, I would still uh, not take too big a position because as you correctly say, you can always be wrong. Yeah. You need to make allowance for that. You can be short. You can be wrong in the short term as you are short and you can hurt as the, the company share price starts rising. And in the US are great examples for that, specifically with Bill Ackman and Herbalife, where he feels right. It becomes a personal crusade, but he loses money for his clients. Yeah. So firstly, think about how to make money for your clients. If you feel you have some short opportunities you've, you've identified, you can take that view but make sure you do the risk management properly. Aren't there safer shorts in this market, in the resources sector, in the financial sector, mm. for example? I mean, we, we've seen the resources index, it's, it's had a nice little rally, something like a 30% rally so far this year. Year on year, we're down 25% in terms of the resources index, mm. but um, there's, there's been a nice rally, perhaps a bit of a sucker rally in the resources sector or not? I also think there's fragility in the resource sector, correct? Once again, to call the resource sector exactly right, when you have these huge bounces mm. and Chinese retail investors propping up some and when prices. Anglo-American can move either way 10% in a single day and that's now normal, this was once the biggest company on the JSE. Mm. Um, it's, it's freaky. Correct. So shorting is not easy. 
And we're going to hear more about it in the next months to come as retail hedge funds open up to the public. And that's what hedge funds do. They short. Mm. So CEOs are also going to hear more on TV that people publicly say they are short their shares, which is something that those people need to be more w comfortable what, with. What impact does that then have on sentiment towards companies? Because suddenly, JP Fassad comes out and he goes, you know what? I don't like the chief executive. I don't like his moustache and I don't like his doctorate. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a gut instinct thing. It's the, the sweaty brow at the results analysis. Um, that's going to ruffle some egos. It might very well ruffle some egos. Maybe some of those egos are too big and need to be ruffled a little Ooh. bit, if I may say yeah. that. But yes, CEOs need to be more comfortable with some criticism. It doesn't always mean there's something wrong with the business model. Quite often, the type of shorts that people employ are more valuation shorts, yeah. where the underlying business is fine, and there's no issue with the are business. Are there some valuation shorts in this market? Because you, you look, I mean, people are constantly tempted to try and shorten our spats, but mm. it's, it's death-defying at a, at a 2,000 Rand level or thereabouts. It gets to 2, 2, it pulls back to 1,800 bucks. It's in quite a nice range. Um, you can play with shorts there, surely. Correct. I'll mention an example in that case. A company that's doing great operationally. They're turning around the ship, and that is pick and pay. Mm. But if you look at the share price, in it's my opinion... It's on a multiple of 30 times or something. It's already been discounted in the share price. So from a valuation perspective, it might be a short, even though operationally, the company is doing great things. So there you have the disconnect where CEOs shouldn't hear that someone is short their share, take it personally, or think there's aspersions being cast on the operations and the business model. It might just be a valuation call. Okay, so let's just break it up quickly. Uh, in terms of business model and in terms of the way in which the business is run, you would be very tempted on a short or net one UEPS. In terms of value, you'd be quite comfortable on a short on pick and pay. One more short from you, then I'll let you go. Oh, you're putting me on the spot, but I would say in the commodity space, um, I think a company like Northern, for instance, which has done a BE deal and splits the value between the common shares and the pref shares, there's something interesting there if, uh, if you take a, a long short between the two instruments. There we go. What an interesting discussion. The independent investor, the analyst, Jean-Pierre Fastard, the guy who got African Bank right. Did you join Capitec board before or after you called a short on? After. Uh, after. Okay. <laughs> just checking. He just checking. Because, you know, he's an ethical kind of guy, is Jean-Pierre Fastard. Uh, yeah, yeah, calling shorts in the market is always a higher risk strategy. You can lose your money. He got it right on African Bank. Is he right on Net One UEPS? Is he right on Northern? Is he right on Pick and Pay. Let's call him back on what three months? What is three months fair? Happy with that, Bruce. Let's call him back in three months' time and let's test how good he is on shorts. Not in shorts, but on shorts. Till next time. Bye bye.